I'm saying. <laughs> so I made an effort. And I guess you did too with your robe on. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm just saying. Well, it's really nice seeing you. It's nice seeing you too. And it is appropriate to have my robe on because it's comfortable. I, I understand. All right, so I guess I was doing this video, not like a interview per se, but just like, a back and forth. Yeah. Like I normally like do. Mm -hmm. All right. So I wrote some questions down and I also I had asked some of the people in my group what did they want in particular to I guess for us to talk about and stuff like that. Sure. So I picked out like 11 questions. We might not necessarily get to all 11 of them, but I picked them out nonetheless. And I'm just trying to get used to this herb. <laughs> so if I keep picking it, it just... I was wondering. I was like, you know what? Lord <clears throat> have mercy. No, I was trying to, you know. <laughs> to... Oh, it's so good to see you. I know. Uh -huh. It's been a couple of months. I know. And that COVID shit. Uh -huh. I'm still getting like over that, but it's still a bitch. So, okay, what was the first time? What was the first time I interviewed you? Oh, that's been a minute. It's been a, a few years. Yeah, a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, maybe like a continuation. Um, one of my god kids might be coming over here. I'm not really sure, but she might be. So, okay, um, in the process of it interview so i guess i'll start with shit. oh why is um so why is conjure so watered down now oh, <laughs> oh and this is, that's something that we typically talk about we do a lot. It, well, it's true. It's true. And one of the reasons, well, there's many, one of the many reasons why uh, it's so watered down nowadays is number one, everybody on the internet wants to, to, to be, you know, a conjure worker, a root worker, a this or a that. And what they do is they start going and look at like Wikipedia and shit like that. And then they start taking it and then they're going to like fuse it and mix it with that to where you think that you in one of them restaurants that serve one of everything from every nation in the world. And that ain't how it works. You know, what people forget is how the work was born, why it was born, what it was done, you know, what the, the need was, you know, at the time that, that it was born. Because, you know, like you see a lot of stuff that goes on with, you know, with this work to where I, I like, I'm always like doing like this. And the yeah. next, the next motherfucker I see in a tie dye fucking shirt talking about, with like, you know, some like, you know, I'm gonna like start reading palms and shit like that behind me and, I, and you know, uh, you know, $5 for, for 27 minutes and, uh, and all that. No, that's, that has nothing to do with this work. Absolutely well, nothing. I think what people do is they get um, the new age stuff that's out. Yes. Kind of mixed with conjure and it's not the same thing. And I think that a lot of times, people want to be heard and people want to be seen and they want to be the expertise, you know, the expert in what their particular divination is. And they don't understand that there are hundreds of divinations, but sure. it's only one hoodoo, it's only one conjure. And mm -hmm. I think that, like you said, all that information is just, weld it together and then they become a professional or uh, a high priestess or 
some shit they made up mm-hmm. and it works for them. And you have so many people who are new to this and they just looking for something to connect to. So it doesn't even necessarily have to make sense because they don't know the difference anyway. And I think that's where, as you say, the tie-dye and the, you know, the the locks and all of that stuff kind of fall in because it looked the part, it looked legit. So if it looked legit, then it, it just has to be. And they don't understand that a lot of that stuff that they it's new wave stuff and it's stuff that people didn't add it to, but it's not the old classic conjure. Exactly. And, and 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 you know, and and it's funny because you know, like um like when you bring that up, because another thing that comes to mind, you know, with that is like one of the things I always want to see. Or, you know, which is, uh, you know, a question is that, you know, have you ever gotten your hands dirty before? Because, you know, conjure about digging in the ground and you know about that with that damn tree in your backyard. I'm just saying. (laughs) Yes. Uh, So, you know, like, so a part of it, you know, is that like a lot of folks, they want, they want to play the part, but when it comes to doing that kind of uh, work, they have no idea what you're even talking about. Yeah. And then too, you know, our grandparents, and I'm going to say the millennials and the people now, they didn't teach it. Or, or they didn't teach them. They didn't give them the word. It, it, it might be in your bloodline, but you might not necessarily have the teaching or the, the backing, so to speak, to go with that power. And so a lot of people, it just gets misconstrued into a lot of different stuff and then I see them on Facebook and you know uh which TikTok and you know all this other stuff and it's yeah and it's just not I saw a video that somebody reposted where a lady was washing her hands with table salt Mm -hmm. yeah and she does it every first of the month for good luck I don't know about that shit, but I mean, I know that you can work salt. And I also know that salt repels. Hold on, I think this is my guy, Chad. Hola. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you can work salt, and salt does repel. I don't normally do it like at the first of the month, but I will tell you that like if um, if I got. Uh, my hands dirty and doing some work i will wash my hands um in in uh in table salt usually it's uh table salt water and and florida water like that's that's what i'll do yes, I'll uh, her. Yeah. well and, that wasn't a video and i don't i think they was talking about abundance and i don't know about abundance ab- who i uh, said so what abundance and prosperity and washing your hands with salt yeah Go, why don't you go? What do they call that? that like that, that salt desert? Where the hell is that in Utah or some shit? <laughs> Ask me what grows out there. <laughs> Nothing. So, again, Contra is very watered down, it's very um, interpretational. It's not supposed to lead to interpretation, it's supposed to be something that you know is taught the right way. That's why I really get on a lot of new readers if they're not together internally, like reading other people and putting that energy out. Like that's just, that, that really scares me because we have to be accountable for what we tell people. We have to be accountable for what we teach Absolutely. people. And I think that that watered down stuff ain't really, you know, there's some more of, of those in the closet in there. There's some, if you look on the floor in there, I think it's some more of those. So anyway, my next question is, I think I, I said that, like new age readers, because it's yeah, kind of but, the same. But, but another thing along, along that line right there is that you and I both know, you and I both know 
And this is a, a, one of the secrets of the universe. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you and I both know that anybody who knows how to read don't need shit to read somebody with. You don't need a damn thing. No, you they don't. Card. You don't no, need you don't. a pen. You don't need a name, one of those things to, to actually do it with. Because actually, if you want to get right down to it, when it comes to that, for the most part, not in every situation, but for the most part, like the, the divination tool, like, you know, whether it be like, you know, cards or, or, or whatever, that's not for me. That's whoever's sitting in front of me because they always, you know, people that are sitting in front of you want to read, they want to look at something. They want to see something. That ain't Right. Me. So the visualization. Is yeah, exactly. Yeah. I just throw them down. There you are. There you are. But here's what's going on. You know, and, you know, and so it's about like, you know, taking that understanding and, and, and moving it, you know, to a new place because, you know, a lot of folks think that, well, you have to have this and you have to have this. And, you know, this has to be pointed in, you know, like two degrees off to the north, you know, <laughs> longitude of, you know, whatever. I don't even know. I'm just like, uh-huh. But it doesn't, it doesn't work that way because it wasn't born that way. No, it wasn't. And I tell people too, when they knew, when they're new, you know, take your time. Don't be such in a rush. <laughs> To be feeling another person's energy, a vibration, especially trying to read it, if you don't know how to cleanse yourself and protect yourself. Because just like they say in the Bible, where spirits jump, they really do. And so I, I have never been so quick to work for people or even to really read people because I never thought that I was ready for that. So that wasn't something that I rushed to. And it really makes me nervous. Um, so many people read a couple of books and they just be ready to be on it. And, and that just, it makes me nervous and I, I want them to take their time, not speeding through it. Oh, one of the yeah. questions I have is, do you, uh, one of the questions was, what do you, when do you give up on spell work? Like you've tried it and the shit just don't work and how long do you keep trying to work on it? Well, so, you know, one of the things that I tell to people all the time, and you'll know exactly what I'm about to say, is that they call this spiritual work for a reason. It is not spiritual easy. This is not a one and done. Sometimes what you have to look at is you have to, to, to look at, you know, what the condition is, you know, like maybe like a wall of stone and you are the hammer and the chisel that's chiseling away at. The other thing is, is that you have to have a strong enough relationship with your spirits to know that, you know what, this is not a path worth proceeding on to because it's only going to hurt you in the future. Because sometimes our spirits will block us from doing, you know, that work because the success of that work will be to our own detriment. So oh, basically like you will get it, but will you want it? <laughs> mm hmm. Yep. And sometimes I tell people too, just because it didn't happen overnight doesn't necessarily mean that it won't ever happen um, when you do the work. But the, the thing about it is it's called divine timing for a reason because it's not your timing necessarily, it's divine timing. And Absolutely. a lot of people don't know or even understand that. They think even for us professionals that it's going to happen just like that. Sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes. Yeah, sometimes, it, but, absolutely. but a lot of times it's not like that. Uh-uh. A lot of I times kinda, keep doing it. I kind of refer to it as if you go to the doctor and you have a headache. So the first thing they're going to do is they're going to check your blood pressure and see if your blood pressure is high and stuff like that. So they might give you a prescription for that. So you go and get the prescription filled. You think that it's done. This is going to work. And you're still having headaches. So you might have to go back to the doctor again. And he might have to do more stuff for you to figure out. So it, it magic is the same. If it was science, we would charge a, high, a lot more money. And we could guarantee it 100%. And unfortunately, it's not science. It's magic. It's occultism. 
And there's no 100% that could ever be given for that. Never. And if anybody ever says that, they're a fucking liar. Yeah, goddamn liar. Mm -hmm. So how has your growth over the years but versus when you started as opposed to now? How is your growth in magic? How has that changed you? Well, I will tell you this, like in, in growth, one of the parts of growth, which people don't like to talk about is pain. The, the growing pains of, you know, of, you know, moving on and upward and such. And, you know, there were some very, very hard lessons that, you know, that at least me personally, that, you know, that, that I had to, you know, I had to learn and I had to accept and I had to, you know, to change as a result of, of that growth. Um, a lot of times people shy away from, from that side of it, but that side is actually the most important side because that's the side that you're always going to remember. Because if there's pain involved, usually we got, like you have people, for example, that'll tell you like, you know, how, you know, they broke their leg in like, you know, 19, you know, 72 and they had to have three surgeries and this, they remember that part of it, you know, but like, you know, you know, they don't remember necessarily when, you know, oh, I don't know, they, they got like a bonus check at their job or, or something like that. Like, so the growing pains of, of spiritual growth the, the the painful side in essence painful um which is the harsher side of it um is the side that you remember and it is also the side that produces the most wisdom because not only do we learn from our mistakes but we grow from the pains that we have to endure so we don't endure them again absolutely <laughs> i think for me um Mine was the pain too, but also like the maturity. Mm -hmm. Whereas oh, when I was younger, I would be more willing to do just about anything magically to, to push it, to force it. Um, whether it lasted or not, I still wanted to do it. Whereas opposed to now, I'm not so quick to take work or do work for people because not just if it's warranted, but do I want, do I want to give up that much energy to do? Mm -hmm. and, right. I, and you're also taking on their burden. Right. And I remember being younger, I would, I was a risk taker. So not that I'm not now, but it, it just, it's a difference because now I know I'm older and now I understand that some spill work, I don't give a damn if you can manipulate that situation or not. You shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And I didn't used to know how to tell people no. And I had to learn to do that. Gracefully. <laughs> but I'll tell you, it's no. <laughs> well, In a fucking minute. And, and there's wisdom behind that. You know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes you have to tell people no. Because, you know, if you don't, then, you know, you take on their burden. But then also what happens is you take on their insecurities. So you're doing work for somebody and all of a sudden they're trying to call you every 10 minutes about that work. Uh -uh. I ain't got time for that. You ain't got time for that. We don't got time for that. And, you know, they, they have to understand, you know, like whenever you're taking on something, yeah, you're you're taking it on, but if you're calling me, like I have I have a client now, who she literally she will literally text me every single day six times a day, and she'll ask me the same question. And I told her I said if you ask me that question one more time, I will never ever lift my finger to do work for you again. Do you understand me? <laughs> and, and, and sometimes then, you have to talk to them like this. Yeah, you have to. Like yeah. there's, there's no other way around it because you try to be subtle in what you're saying, you know, hoping that they get the message, but then they don't get the damn message. And so now you have you have to be um, you know, assertive and aggressive with them so they understand what the hell you're saying. But most times I find those clients 
before you ever took them on and you did a consultation or a reading with them, they already were tumultuous and volatile people. And so I've learned now all money ain't good money and it's okay to turn people away because Absolutely it is. Yeah, I find that I don't have the patience. And once I've signed a contract with you and once I've given you dates and once I've given you follow-up dates, there is no call in between unless somebody getting killed or somebody died mm -hmm. because you must have order and structure. And I think that a lot of people don't possess that and I'm not the parent or the person to teach them that. So I, I remember back on a... Um, like knowing when to say when too. Um, I did this guy mm -hmm. wanted his ex girlfriend back, and so he Those wanted her separated. Clients. Huh? Those are the worst ass clients. Yeah, the men. The worst. <laughs> yeah, they are. That he wanted his ex girlfriend back, but he was a man of money. He was a man of means, and she was really like a chick that. You know, she was going to get what she was going to get, then she was going to move on. And so that's what I got from that. But he wanted her separated from the friends, from anything that was holding her back. So I go and I do work and she called him and say that her and the friends ain't friends no more. And she was living with the roommate. So she moves back in with him. I'm so young and I'm thinking, boom, I'm done because they, she didn't move back in with him and that's going to be great. And that's going to be whatever. It wasn't, it wasn't over because she did go back. This time he called me, he was suicidal because she stole his money. He won't All of it. She went through his money. I mean, he was a wealthy man, but not she fucked him until he, he wasn't one and and so I learned in that that yeah he got her back because that's what he wanted and he paid to get whatever the separation whatever but he broke him literally mm -hmm. and he was like I wish I would have never paid you to hey hey I did what I was supposed to do yep <laughs> So, um, someone asks, what is love to you? Now, I have many definitions for that. So I'll go ahead and let you go first. There are definitely many, many, many different answers to that. Totally. <laughs> <clears throat> I will tell you this, at least for me. Love for me is someone who accepts me for who I am and they, they, they like, you know, who I am, whether I'm at my best or whether I'm at my worst doesn't matter, but it's somebody who's, who's there, who can see past that love is for me, somebody who, you know, is not, you know, around me or with me because they want something you know love for me is you know the the the, the thing that 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 happens like when you know when you can look at somebody and you know like when nobody else is watching you can you can look at somebody and they just give you just just a simple a simple look nothing nothing more than that and within within the scope of that look, you know that everything, no matter what's going on, is going to be okay. That's what love to to me is, you know. And there's there's a lot of answers toward love. I mean, you know, people can be like, you know, they can they can try to you know put love in a box and define you know what it's going to be for them. And I mean, do what you want to do. Everybody got to work out their own salvation anyway. So you know, do what you want to do. But for me, like. I can't put it in, in, in a box like that because, you know, it, it's, it's the individual that, that, that matters to me more than, than, than anything else, you know, and, you know, I want to see the individual at their best. I want to see them at their worst. I want to see, you know, all of that because none of those things change the way that, that I feel, but 
what it does is it gives me a privilege and an honor of knowing them more. You know, not knowing somebody, it's like, it's like this, okay? It's like this, it's like, you know, you can know somebody who is on stage and performing, but I want to know what it's like backstage. Yeah, after. But they're not in front of everybody. That's what it is. That's what that is to me. So that's my answer to that. Well, to me, love is, it's a multitude of things. And it's also accepting a multitude of faults. Sure. Sure. I think that when it comes to love, people want people to accept them for how they are, but they're not willing to accept the other person for how they are. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think that love, it's loving a person if they worse. It's loving them when they all fucked up and then they don't fucking have it together because that's the test of times. You know, I don't, I think that I'm at the, the point where I don't look at love like in this fairy tale thing and it's supposed to, no. it's like a one size fit all because it don't. You know, you have to be able, it's really now, what can I put up with? How much of this person can I deal with? They good, they bad, they indifferent. What can I handle? What do I think that's just too much? What do I think it's not going to fit me now where I'm at? And I think in love is it's ever changing. It's, it's constantly and constantly growing. And what love was six months ago might not be what love is today. That is very true. Because we're constantly growing. We we are a evolution within ourselves. And I think that everything has to grow, even that, you know what I'm saying? The definition of that. Because oh, I, I know when I first like fell in love and then I know what love is today. My dad used to say that you only have three good loves of your life. The rest in between are just lessons, things that you learn from. He said you have your puppy love, like your high school love or your adolescent love. That love is kind of built to open you up to caring about somebody else. But very rarely does that ever evolve into that love of a lifetime. Some people get it at such an early age and some people don't. Then he said the second one was, that's the one that teaches you things. That second relationship, that second love, it teaches you things. It teaches you patience. It teaches you how to see yourself. It, those are lessons too. And then he said the third oh, yeah. one is like the love of your life. Like he said, my mother was a love of his life. That was his third. I don't know if I necessarily agree with all of that, but that's what my dad used to say that love was to him. And my dad was a Sagittarius, December 20, which I find extremely funny when you're talking about a Sag in love. <laughs> <laughs> But that's, you know, <coughs> let's see. Oh, okay. I asked that. I asked it. Yeah. Um, they asked, who is the most influential person in the past and the present? But Lord, I mean, there have there's that was a good question, right? <laughs> that yeah. Uh, honestly, like, um, I think the way that I would answer that is, I mean, because there's the, there's so many uh, influential. Uh, influential people that you know that that you know i've been around and stuff but i'd have to go for like you know like in the past um the most influential person to me in the past and you know who always 
was and always will be, you know, one of my heroes is, is my grandfather. Um, he's the one who would always push me, you know, to do, you know, what, you know, what was needed. He would, he would always, he would always like, he would make sure that, that, that I was, that I was taken care of and whatever, you know, I needed to know, all I had to do was just pick up the damn phone and, and, and call and, um, and, you know, <clears throat> one of the things that, you know, that he said to me one time, which I've never forgotten and I never will, is he said that, you know, he said, there, there are people that think that, that someone is born with greatness. You're not born with greatness. You just awaken to it. And I never forgot that. And, you know, it, it's something that, you know, what he meant by that is that, like, there is a greatness that you have in you, but you just have to awaken to it. You have to, you know, accept the calling that you have from the spirit. You have to do what you're supposed to do uh, by that and do well by that. And then what happens is, is it grows into something that you never even thought was possible. And and he was very, very, very right in that. Um, and as far as like, you know, in, in today's world, um, I'm inspired by a lot of things and, and I'm inspired by a lot of people, but I do have to say, I do have to say that one of the strongest inspirations in you know in in my life you know presently has been you hands down because you know those conversations we have behind the stage and all that stuff and then like you know we have those like really like heart to hearts and and those things that that go on i never forget those things and you know, even as we get older, we still learn and we still are able to, to learn. And, you know, we, even though, you know, being, you know, priests, we're still supposed to be inspired and we're still supposed to learn because we all don't know it all. But I will say that, that, you are really, really, really one of uh, the main people that that, uh, that inspires me, and you are. You, you really are, because you make me think about things in ways that I never would have before. And to me, that's inspiring. Thank you. Because that gives <laughs> me you, an Bob. opportunity. Thank you, Bob. Well, I wasn't true. expecting that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> don't let me cry. Um, I will say the most inspiring or influential person, um, in the past would be my mother. Um, oh, yeah. my great aunt, my mother that raised me. I, I think that <laughs> she saw so much in me and she knew and I didn't. And I think that I tell this story a lot. I used to carry this big ass suitcase around that was hers. And I never broke the lock to it. So for like, I don't know, she died in 2004. I didn't open it to 2016. So I've just carried this suitcase around wherever I would move, it would be in the garage, the closet, I've never opened it. And so when I moved to Houston, I opened it and it was a Bible in there, like in a wooden box. And I opened it and, and literally in every page had my name in it. And so I found this little rolled up piece of paper that had this red string and some of my hair tied around it. And I was like, what the fuck is that? So I undo it and I unroll it. And it said, keep her humble. 
And so I didn't really know what that meant, but it said, keep her humble. And I recall going through, you know, things in my life that have humbled the fuck out of me. And so I always feel like when this lesson comes of humbling or something humbling, I always feel like I, it's her that he's still answering that petition that was made. Ain't no telling how young I was. So I would say it would always be her. Um, the person now, you saw my answer. I was going to say you. Because you are something that I prayed for so long for, that I petitioned so long for. And it's so funny how you tell people to be specific in what you're asking for. And I was very specific. And it took me a long time. It took me seven years almost to get that. And so when I got it, it just, that's how you know when it's for you because it's just so instantaneously. And it's like, everything that you say to me I need to hear that sometimes I don't like what you say to me and it kind of I'll be like what you said that to me but at the same time I have to sit back and I have to be thankful because a lot of times we don't have people in our life that's really honest with us we have people that's going to appease us or please us and, and, and really be lying to themselves about themselves about how they responded to us. I don't even know if that made sense what I just said, but- No, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> yeah, you know how like people don't want to rock the boat with you? So instead mm -hmm. of them telling you the fucking truth, they kind of teeter-totter around it. And that's not something that you've ever done to me. And it grows no. me. And you're probably- one of the only men in my life that could say something and sit me the fuck down. Whereas I don't really have nobody else to like put me in my place, so to speak. So for me, you're it. <laughs> I can't believe you stole my answer. But um, you're it. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so grateful for you and the experience of you to know you too behind the scenes. You know, I love who's on Simoese, but I also know who you are beyond that. And many people aren't open with you because you can't trust them to be able to be vulnerable and to be honest. And yeah. I can text you and be honest and say, I'm not on it today. I'm not feeling it today. Like today is not my day. Like I don't feel good today. And you know what to say. And it kind of brings me back in perspective. So I would say you. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I love you so much. I love you too, yeah. Lord, um, I'm mercy. I didn't want to make this video long. And I just thought that, you know, we would just talk about some things that we talk about normally. And then I would also allow people out of my group to ask questions and stuff like that. One sure. person told me she wanted to be initiated. Girl, if you still ask about being initiated, you're not probably ready. Because those things tentatively come to you. The people <laughs> too. So that's how I would answer that. Mm -hmm. I, and you're absolutely right. When it comes to, when it comes to that, you know, you could, because on the daily, on a daily basis, I get people who come to me talking about, I want to be initiated. I want, you know, to do, I have somebody who, God bless him, who said, uh, that was the other day, sent me a message on Facebook uh, talking about how uh, they're going to come uh, to New Orleans uh, on on uh, the birthday because um, he wants me to initiate him into what I have no idea um, while he's here. And I'm like, how do you think an initiation takes five minutes? But okay, good try. And third of all, I'm like, like I don't know you. It's a process. And so, yeah, there's all of these things that are involved in that. 
People, because if yeah, you take, it's a lot. Yeah, you take you take it, you know, you take it for you know what it is intended to. And one of those things that that has to happen is that like there has to be like a a, a working knowledge of you know of the individual and the person that that you know, that does the initiation. Otherwise, all you're doing is you're creating a combination for disaster. And so, no, 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 no. Well, I love you, Sam and Luis. You know, we should do these like weekly or something. I think we should too. There is one other thing though I wanted to bring up in this conversation, uh, which is, uh, which is a conversation that you and I had on, I think it was Sunday. I believe it was Sunday. And there was something that you said in, you know, in this conversation that I think not only is it like straight up divine wisdom, but I think folks would learn a lot from it if they were to just think about it and to do it for a second. And what you said to me, to quote you exactly, is that you said that you believe in the beauty of the light and the dark and that we have to reflect upon both of that in opulence. Now, I want you to expand on that a little bit, if you wouldn't mind, please, because that is such a powerful message, especially when it comes to work in the spirit. All that, oh, yes, indeed. Powerful message right there. What I think that a lot of times people want to be dark and they think that hoodoo and voodoo is dark and then they think that Wicca and whatever the fuck else that's opposite of that um, is not, you know, not dark, it's light. And I think that people look at their life like that. They look at their past mistakes, being the dark part you know their history the the past is being a dark part and the future is a light but a lot of them don't know how to see it because when they look in the mirror all they see is the dark so i'm kind of putting it together and so what i mean by that with opulence and with excellence is that you have to be able to look at yourself in a mirror and not forget the past because it really is the foundation of the person Absolutely. that you've become. But you have to learn to reflect upon yourself. And sometimes it's hard to look at yourself in a mirror. I, I said it today to a client. I said, it used to be hard for me to say I was a good person because I've done so much dark stuff that it's mm -hmm. hard to see the light in me. I, it used to be hard for me to say, I'm a good person. I'm a great person. I'm a great motherfucking person. And I have the most loving fucking heart. But it took a long time for me to see that, for me to be able to look in the mirror and see the, because I can remember a time where I didn't give a fuck about nobody. And now I'm in a position where I give a fuck about everything. And I think that we just, we have to be able to put ourselves in an honest space and recognize the difference, mirror that, the good and the bad, because it's all relevant. People like, forget your past. No, not necessarily forget it, but build on it. Taking it and, and, and transmuting it into something beautiful. This is an ugly world. But it's a beautiful world too. It's just what you take from each part. Every day ain't gonna be beautiful. Every day ain't gonna be perfect. But you take that, mirror that, take from what you need from it and, and expand on it. And that's kind of what I mean by that. It's just, you just gotta take all of it because all of it is relative. All of it is important. Not just one part, all of it. You know, and it's it's not about anybody else. It's just about your process. Because believe it or not, why I don't get in people's business is because I got enough of my own. And <laughs> <laughs> I have enough business of my own. You will never see me make videos about other workers. You will never see me publicly 
comment on other workers because I have enough shit of my own. I don't have enough time to be sitting up worrying about, um, I don't know what they call themselves, magic willow broomstick version. Yeah. Like I just, and, and, and be in her life and be in her business and say what she is and say what she ain't. I don't want to do that. It's just enough dealing with my own shit, dealing with my own past. Fuck that. Waking up being happy every day. Exactly. Being happy, finding something to be happy about, working past your own mind, because just because I'm me and you're you, that don't mean that we don't, you know, the mind don't play on us too, getting into your head about things. That's what I mean about that mirror. That light and that dark, that, that shit is crucial. Oh, absolutely. It is because it's necessary. You have to have both. You know, one cannot exist without the other. And having and recognizing both in what they are, what does that produce? Balance. It produces harmony within yourself. An even exchange of energy. <laughs> that part. <laughs> A beautiful even exchange of energy. I can't believe you remember that. <laughs> that conversation Sunday. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> that touched your spirit, Papa. <laughs> you sure did. You already know. <laughs> well, <laughs> Papa, you want to give your information if people are wanting to seek you out? Sure. If you want to, to seek me out, you can find me on Facebook at uh, Hoodoo Samoese, Instagram at Hoodoo Samoese, or you can go to uh, my website, which is uh, hoodoosenmoise.com. Thank you, Papa. And we should, we should do a video. I'm going to have to work yeah. on it. I think we should. Well, I love you, Papa, and I will talk to you later. <laughs> All right. I love you, too. Yeah. <laughs> good night, Rope. My Rope says good night. <laughs>